Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. Tonight, we bring you Season 2, Episode 3, Gentle Manners. Let's meet our vampires. Hi, everybody. I'm Alex Ward, playing Jasper. Hi, I'm Erica Ishii, and I'm playing Annabelle. We Dave Walters. Despite some rumors you might have heard to the contrary, still the undisputed Baron of the Valley. Our favorite Toreador, Nellie G, is not with us this evening because our friend and colleague, Cynthia Marie, had an unavoidable travel conflict. We wish her a safe journey and ask her to hurry back to us so that we can continue Nellie's side of the story. Our special guest, Josephine McAdam, will join us at a dramatically appropriate moment. We'd like to thank some people for their support. First, the master craftspeople at Dogmite for our beautiful clan dice boxes, which hide away your hunger day, dice safe from prying eyes, and our fantastic custom storyteller screen. Thank you, Dogmite. We'd also like to thank the family, who show us so much love and support, and ask you to please use the hashtag LA by night whenever you talk about us online. To recap, Last week's intense episode, we're going to take a look at an excerpt from Ramona's sketchbook. My beloved coterie, what a night, right? Here's Victor, undisputed Baron of the Valley, trying to employ his favorite tactic for the masquerade by hiding in plain sight, live streaming himself from the middle of a police incident. It all went so bad, so fast. Annabelle threw a truck to escape, by herself. Damn, girl. Then, Nellie, last time we saw her, she was fighting alone, fighting some creature made of shadow, maybe a La Sombra. I hate those guys. But it gets crazier, Jasper getting blasted in the face by some witch fire. Good thing he's already ugly, right? Finally, there's Jasper, decapitating the Camarilla's new sheriff. Like, knife through the neck, slice, head to the ground, poof, ashes. No idea where it goes from here, they'd better be ready for anything. And now, let's tell a vampire story. The night before last, thousands of mortals at the Grove were terrified by what the press is calling the Grove Incident. The police are saying that it was a criminal arrest that went bad. Police officers were wounded and unidentified suspects escaped. You know better. Since that night, the Coterie has been using Club Maharaja Temple of Boom headquarters in East Hollywood as a temporary haven. According to Campbell, your head of security, yesterday was bad. Hundreds of mortals, Temple of Boom fans, were gathered outside the club, hoping for a glimpse of Victor Temple, of Nellie G, 
and Baby B, the mysterious newcomer to the Temple of Boom's media enterprise. Tonight, things seem to be calming down. Only a few dozen mortals are still hanging around outside, hoping for a glimpse of fame. Whether or not there are any journalists out there still, you're not sure. Most of the respectable journalists are now attempting to reach you through your company. In fact, a lot of people are trying to reach Victor and Annabelle. Baby B is out there now. It didn't take long for some of your old college friends, colleagues, and associates to see you on that live stream. You received so many texts and calls from concerned friends and associates that you've probably turned the ringer off on your phone. Juan himself has texted you at least 25 times <laughs> in the last 24 hours. Oh. And Victor, this has brought you constant and very inconvenient attention. Your mortal staff, your media celebrities and personalities are under scrutiny. Press have even gone to some of their homes to ask for comments, trying to get close to you. You can't leave the club easily without attention. In fact, you've just returned from a very inconvenient appointment with the police. Well, I just got back from my police interview. I think they're kind of trying to bury this too because they don't want it to seem like there was some major terrorist incident at the Grove or anything like that. And I deeply suspect our friends in the ivory tower are doing what they can to sweep things under the rug too. Mm. All right. So all right. we're probably all right. Uh, Cause again, we've got video that we were there and the police asked us to leave and we left. And then on the way down the stairs, heard gunfire, ran for our lives. Here we are. Okay then. Yeah, they uh, didn't really have any leads on that uh, weird hooded person. Although they did ask me for the contact information for Baby B, and I said that they should direct all of their questions to my very expensive attorney. That, uh, I guess, uh, without Ebe, I was owed a solid. So I have some very high-priced legal help with this, too. And Nellie? She's good. I, um, I heard from her. Hey, she's checking on some leads, but I, I think she's all right. Leads on what? All of this. Uh, you know, she, she said, she said, give her three days in today's day two. So if she's not back by tomorrow, maybe we go looking for her. But for now, I'm trying to give her some room to do her thing. Okay. <sighs> Are you... Yeah. Okay. Mm. You know, f fire takes a while to heal. Yes, yeah, so let's take care of some housekeeping here. Jasper, <clears throat> you've been burned severely. You've taken yeah. several aggravated wounds <laughs> from blood sorcery fire. Mm -hmm. You have managed to heal one, but you still have two aggravated wounds to heal. I do indeed. Mm -hmm. So your appearance is still a bit crisp. Yeah. Annabelle, you have taken significant superficial damage as well. It's been two nights, so let's make two rouse checks for healing. Good. Good to go? Succeeded on both. Mark off, uh, or I should say, give yourself back two levels of damage. No. Can I try and repair one more point of aggravated because it's a new knight? You know that that will cost you uh, three rouse three checks. Rouse checks, yes. <sighs> we don't need you getting over Good. hungry here. It's one success. What? Two successes. Third time's the charm. Bestial failure. 
bestial failure. Two skulls. Two skulls. <sighs> so, <laughs> fortunately, since it's not a regular dice pool, yep. and only the rouse check, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, uh, you do not heal the aggravated wound. Mm. You remain at the current level of damage. Okay. The same blackened skin, the same separated flesh, the same crispy edges, and you gain a hunger die. As the beast yawns, craving, <coughs> craving. I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that witch fire, different than regular fire. Fire bad. Yeah. Fire, fire bad. Jasper. Bad. Yeah. Yep. But you look dope, though. Like, you could lean into this. Like, you kind of got this, like, Phantom of the Opera thing Thanks. happening. That it's... I appreciate that. While we're here... That went really badly. Yeah, may I start with a hearty what the fuck? I thought it went great. <laughs> I mean, considering. I mean... How could it... Possibly have gone worse, Victor. Mm. Let me give you a little tip from working underground in a protest group. You don't put your face out there, okay? Because I cannot show myself around campus anymore. My phone is blowing up. I mean, you know mostly what I did before this. I cannot afford to be noticed by the police, by authorities. Like, you put your face out there, you get arrested, you get doxxed, or worse. We didn't get arrested because our faces are out there. This place didn't get firebombed because our faces are out there. It was the perfect cover. Well, I'm glad this place didn't get firebombed because it's the only place we have left because we cannot leave. Eh, we'll be able to go soon. We're just laying low temporarily. The only reason we didn't go back to the valley tonight is I'm still not sure, but it, we need to make sure that everything is smooth with our guests. But, you know, I think you should lean into the baby B thing. It's a compliment. You're, you're now a model. At least I didn't say you were like a singer. Although, if you want a singing contract, I can put you on the label if you... Can you lace a track? I hate this and I hate everything about this. Oh, you're such a brew, huh? Come on. <laughs> I... I'm glad there was no lasting... damage. Hopefully. That remains to be seen. And I know this is extremely rich coming from me, but that was reckless. That was reckless. You didn't ask any of us what we would think of your plan. Like you put me out there for all the world to see. Now I, it, that, the internet just doesn't go away, Victor. Exactly. So we use it, we lean into it. Yeah. You can't control the internet, Victor! I've been doing all right so far. Listen, if people see us together, like every kindred that didn't know that I was around before, now they know. Yeah. And there are other people that you might not want to make the connection, right? Oh, so you understand now that keeping people that we care about separate from all of this is an important thing. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, I put extra people on everyone that we care about uh, because there is something that you do need to know, all jokes aside, my method of maintaining the masquerade aside. The person you guys killed was very important to the yeah. Camarilla. There will be a significant response. You did what you had to do. Yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb. I killed that person. That thing. I did it. Not her. No one knows. She barely did any damage to him. You know them as well as I do, and I don't think they're going to be that nuanced. I just mean for our story, for what we tell people, if we tell people... I killed her. Him. It. Whatever it was. It's been a long couple of days. That's very sweet of you. Very noble. 
and very stupid. You are not in any condition. How the entire time you've known me, when have I done something that wasn't stupid? <sighs> you know, actually, this this reminds me of something. For the most part, the firefight happened. You know, we did what we did and we got out of there. But there were those two officers, mortals, again. Yeah, I'm aware. Are you okay with this? That was different. Then what? Then the other two kids. At the house. What? The sour sugar house. Other two kids. Yeah. Those kids, Victor. I remember. She didn't. In terms of your vampirism, <clears throat> the stain on your humanity from the murder of those students mm -hmm. has been removed since you succeeded in your unmarked humanity role. Yeah. The thing is, I didn't mean to take out those two kids, and that was something I had to deal with. And... Um, it wasn't good and it wasn't what I wanted, but uh, we're monsters and that's what happens. This, on the other hand, was different because they weren't innocents. They weren't not hurting anybody. They were actively trying to harm people that I, for better or for worse, agreed to protect. So those policemen however much I didn't want to kill them. It's different. As long as you're good, I'm good. I don't. I can't. Killing those other kids it was an accident and It's hard for me to kind of reconcile because I know you and I know in this case you were, you saved my life, you did. Thank you, but I mean, I feel like you're playing, you're playing so fast and loose with everything and it's like you almost don't care what happens to you. See, the way, at least before you showed up, the way we worked was a lot different. We had the face who dealt with everybody. We had her who did whatever she did, charmed people, got what she wanted, and generally told me I was disgusting. And then I dealt with the things that the face or the charm didn't deal with. Our current situation has put more of a light on what I do. And it's unpleasant. And also, there weren't as many police shooting at me before. Or a fire or witches or a lot of things before this is a little new to me too but you're not wrong just be more careful okay like since we've met you've almost died two maybe three times maybe three times but I didn't I didn't. I didn't. And I appreciate everything you've done. I would like to stop being a riot shield. I mean, we're not asking you to do that. In fact, I think I deal with that a little better than yeah, you do, so but, uh, maybe don't. Don't put me in situations where I get shot. 
to my credit, the situations keep coming to us. Like I did Griffith Park, those dudes were waiting for us. And here, those dudes are waiting for us. Like, I, okay. And, and honestly, more people are going to be trying to harm us now than less. That's Yes, and that's exactly what I mean. Your decisions to become Baron and to drag us along with you, regardless of our actual opinions on whether or not we want to be part of your barony, put us in danger a lot. Yeah, calling yourself the Undisputed Baron of the Valley is super fun and all, but it's very much in dispute. <laughs> and making a live stream like that is a challenge every Camarilla, Camarilla? Cam well, it doesn't matter yeah, either. To every person from the Ivory Tower here in Los Angeles and abroad. Well. And you... it's not a challenge that we can rise to yet. So you're going to have to be careful. There's literally four of us. So, of course, I'm aware of the vulnerability of our position. Dare I say I'm more aware of the vulnerability of our position because I know Vannevar Thomas. I know Nines Rodriguez. I've met Therese. I know what we're up against. But here we are. And again, I told you, Anytime you guys feel like you're safer somewhere else, I understand. You can go. I'm not trying to force you into anything. I would like your help. I would like us to be able to do this together, but we're here now. And I personally was tired of having to wait for Abrams or whoever else to make the same old tired decisions. Because I'll tell you something. What Marco said was right. The Anarchs have held California for a hundred years. And what have they done with it? Nothing. They just hide in their baronies and, and, and watch the world pass them by thinking they're so counterculture and tough when they're trapped, they're stuck. They're not that different from the ivory tower. And now we have a chance to do something different. We have a chance to be different, honestly, to be better. And I would like that for us. I would like that for all of us, not just us. I would like that for us because we need it. I believe in that. I believe in that. And also right now you guys are the only family that I've got. But we have to be smart about it. Yeah. And if you want our support, you're gonna need to communicate with us. Well, Speaking of communication, while yes, there could be more in specific instances, I think there could also be less to people outside of our specific coterie about, say, people's domiciles. Again. X didn't know anything about what I did. That's why I liked having him around. Now he knows things about what I do because you and Miss Absent over there told him. I had no idea who X was until you sent him in your place. Maybe if you told me it's important that he doesn't know this, then that would have well, been fine. Well, I would assume that the severity and the unpleasantness of what I did and how shocked you all were would trigger something in your minds to not spread it around town. Who's even going to believe him if he tries to tell? It's oh, no, no one will believe him. But my relationship with X has changed now. Maybe you weren't as good of friends as you thought. Have you talked to him recently? Nope. Haven't talked to him since you had him babysit us. How'd he do? He said he had fun. Shockingly competently. It was disturbing. He said something about being a princess now? Maybe. Or a driver. Or a princess driver. You know, n none Good of that. for him. I, I, yeah, but I, I do want to, to impress upon you both. I don't know the Camarilla's strength in Los Angeles. Uh, Vannevar and his group were in charge in San Francisco, were driven out of San Francisco by an uprising of Camarilla. So I don't know what strength he had when he came here and we took out his sheriff, which is significant. 
but Vannevar alone is me plus 400 years. Right. And I don't know who else is with him. Mm -hmm. And they will take umbrage with the fact that we, we kill Sheriff Marcos. Yeah. It is at this moment that you receive a text message. It reads, <clears throat> Victor, my boy, are you free for a call? I know we just said communication, but please, at least if you listen to this, don't make any noise. Everybody's gotta have some secrets. I reply, absolutely. 10 seconds later, the phone rings. I do not put it on speakerphone, <laughs> but I hold it to my ear. Victor, my boy. Uh, yes, Fiorenza, hello. How was your visit to the police? Much smoother, thanks to you. And your attorney was incredibly competent. Please give her my highest regards. Excellent. I am pleased to hear it. Hmm. And I am pleased to hear you. Yes, it's been uh, a couple of trying nights, but I believe we've maintained sufficiently. Do you? How intriguing. Are your associates with you? They're near. Excellent. Please put me on your speakerphone. I wish to address all of you. Uh, absolutely, and I will allow you to introduce yourself. I don't often speak of you. And I do put it on speakerphone. Good evening. Hold um, my hold name on. is Fiorenza Savona. You do not know me? Allow me to assure you I know exactly who each of you are. This line will remain secure for a very short time. What has been set in motion cannot now be stopped. It can be endured and perhaps survived. We shall see. You are very fortunate. There is a technicality in your favor. The Camarilla has many ancient laws and customs, and it prides itself on these traditional observances. According to one interpretation of custom, in order to take praxis, a kindred must formally declare themselves the prince of a city and inform the resident kindred through his or her herald of this fact. Be grateful that there are some parties in this sect who have chosen to interpret facts in this fashion at this time. So in the view of the Camarilla, there is no Prince of Los Angeles and therefore no sheriff. Let me assure you that Vannevar will waste no time in choosing a herald and declaring his praxis. He unfortunately now knows what you are capable of. His next enforcer will not be some jumped up gangrel with flashy parlor tricks, no more neonates. I he will choose someone, something, that Los Angeles has not seen in a hundred years. Mr. Hartwood, are you there? Yes. Hartwood. I congratulate you on what I am told was a masterful display of lethal violence. Thank you. I regret that I was not able to see it firsthand. I do so enjoy a beautiful murder. <sighs> now, some questions. Did you strike with the intent to kill? Yes. Why did you do it? Because he was harming someone. Whom? Annabelle. Intriguing. 
exactly how deep does this protective feeling go, Mr. Hartwood? Well, we do work together, and I'm a part of the same coterie, and I have been put in a position to protect her. I see. How did it feel to end his unlife <laughs> when you knew that you had sent him to the final death? What emotion passed through your undead heart? Um. Uh, uh, Ma'am, is, is there a, a point to this line of questioning? If you'll excuse me. Speak? I, I, I don't know. I think Jasper was probably just caught up in the moment, and, you know, he's, he was bleeding out, and I was... It was a mixture of fear and excitement. Yes. Yes, it usually is, isn't it? Mr. Hartwood, you have a reputation as a kindred who takes care of problems for payment. Have you killed for employers before? Yes. Would you do so again? Probably. How very interesting. This line will no longer be secure. I bid you all a good evening. As always, thank you for your help. Good night, my boy. Until our next little chat. I'm already looking forward to it. The line goes dead. Guess that takes care of that. And you know, you don't, you don't have to, you know. I'm sure, you know, Sugar Vamp Daddy could take care of you and you don't have to kill any more people you don't want to have to kill. I know I don't have to. <laughs> but everyone has their place in this world of things that no longer live. And I be albeit unfortunate found the one that I do. What did you want to do? <laughs> what did I want to do? Yeah, what did you want to do, like in, in real life? In real life. Or before you took up killing? Anna Annabelle, I don't... What I wanted when I was alive doesn't really pertain to who I am now, but who I was then versus who I want to be now are different, but who I was then versus who I am now are very similar. And there's a not everyone gets turned because they're trying to save a life. Or however you got turned, or however she got turned, which seems like a whole bag of nonsense. <laughs> but some people get turned because they make other people angry. And I made other people angry. And so they decided I made them angry enough to take my life away. And I'm not talking about living or dying. They took my whole life away. So, <laughs> now that I'm dead, I figured I'd just continue doing what made people angry. Because, <laughs> What made me happy kind of went away when I died. Uh, 
Uh, sir, it's Campbell. Um, you have uh, your guest, Miss Eva, has arrived. Shall I show her in? Um, just one second, Campbell. Yes, sir. Are we good here? I'm fine. Annabelle? Yeah. Hartwood? Yes, yeah, please. that's my last name. Jasper Hartwood? Yeah, I, yes, sir. Yes, please show her in. I'll show yeah. Miss Eva in, sir. Do you have a last name? <laughs> Not that you need to know. I see. You get to know mine. I don't get to know yours. That's, that's, uh, you that's are great. starting to understand how we do things. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Good evening, Eva. Uh, hi. Hello. Oh. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, well, um, okay. Uh, thank you for <laughs> safely escorting. The Weird Sisters, thank you. Yes, absolutely. They've been uh, seen to. They're resting comfortably. They've had all of their needs met. They've been awaiting your arrival. Yes, I've spoken to them. How did you get in here? How did you get in here? Uh, I let security know to let her through. Oh. I simply walked in. <laughs> That's cool. Um... Why the flowers? They were too beautiful to pass up. You deserved something for the trouble you went through. And the trouble did end up being significant. Yes, I heard. <laughs> Big flake of skin just falls off my face. <laughs> Quite disgusting. He is, in fact, um, severely injured. His uh, part of his face is blackened and peeling. Uh, the wound does nothing to enhance his appearance. Uh, however, you have seen kindred wounded by fire before, and you know that in time, perhaps a long time, it will heal. I would like to guess, Anne, that he looks super metal, though. <laughs> super metal. I said it. I. Just leave it. Apologies, Jasper. <clears throat> we didn't light the fire. It's fine. I would never. So, who are these friends of yours, and why are they important to the Camarilla? The sisters. They're Tremere, and they're Anarchs like us. They needed protection. Why didn't you want any of the other barons to know? Especially Abrams. Because even though we control this block, we're still surrounded. You know, I thought you would handle it more discreetly. So did I. Yeah, so say we all. Right. Discreet was not ever a possibility. <laughs> no, but safety was of importance. They are safe. Physically. What exactly happened? And did it need to happen? Well, if I'm being completely honest, our plan had worked seamlessly. We had the police distracted, we had an exit, we had a way out, and your sisters made a very mistimed commotion that sort of sent the entire thing literally flaming straight to hell. So I'm not here to cast blame. I know it was a hectic situation, but do understand, we did our part. So it was their fault. It was the Camarilla's fault. And... What happened uh, to the sheriff, is it? You see. He's dead. He's dead. <sighs> Although there's a certain interpretation that there was no sheriff, so maybe it was just a wayward member of the ivory tower who was speaking out of turn and got silenced. I have a feeling they're going to use that as a means of coming back. 
Yes, um, it wasn't originally the plan, but it just sort of happened. Annabelle, at your feet, a rat darts out from beneath the table, creeps toward Jasper, and grabs the big, disgusting, crispy flake of skin in its little clawed paw. And then runs away with it Uh. along the wall. In full view. I've hired some gangrel muscle, and uh, they clean up for us, too. It's nice. Oh. Okay. I see. I do have what I think is the most important question that none of us have asked. Yes, is it, are you magic? Is there actually magic? (laughs) Apparently there's two important questions. Yes, magic is real. (gasps) I'm I'm sorry. I I need a minute. Oh my God. I think he was quite clear that it was real. I know, but like... And they're like, have you ever read Harry Potter? <laughs> um, we're back on this again. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Hey! I am aware of its existence. Did yes. you go to like a Hogwarts or something? Are there houses? Huh. I mean. Yes, there are houses. <laughs> No, absolutely not. Hang on, we have more pressing things. Although, remember, I told you, there's mortals that can do it, too. We'll come back to that, though. Uh, The most important question, how did the Camarilla know they were there? You said they exited the boat, they got in the van, they were driving across Hollywood, and they were already on them. How? That I don't know. I wish I did. Remember you said there was a blood tracking something or other on Annabelle? Is it possible that they're being tracked or surveilled somehow? Um, I would assume that they would be aware of that. They know what to look out for. And uh, they know magic. (sighs) Okay, you're allowed to freak out about that. It's it's, 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 it's interesting, yeah. Um, I'll tell you the story of Tremere some other time, though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, what now? Do they stay with us? Where are they going? Um, if you could, that would be helpful. Well, you did offer them a place in your barony. I have reached an understanding with Violet, Hester, and Kyoko. Yes about the terms by which they might be allowed to peacefully dwell in the valley. Yes, this is true. And Um, you and I also have arrived at our arrangement. Yes. Well, I do owe you. What can I do for you? (laughs) You know, the... I can do much for you. You know, I'm I'm the first to call Bruja cliche, and at the risk of sounding uh, like an old quote from a Godfather movie, uh, there will come a time that I will call in that favor, but that time is not yet. I will make sure that when I have to make use of your services, it will be something that only you can help me with. But I'm open to suggestions if you might know a way <laughs> of which you might be of particular use. Because I actually do not know your full capability. Because, and I hate to say this publicly, I don't know a lot of Tremere. So this is kind of new to me, too. I'm so did getting you... to know them rather quickly. And he hates everybody, and yet... Yeah, he seems to really like you guys a lot. Yeah. We're likable. I mean... I wouldn't say I like our guests, yet they did light me on fire, so we're kind of in a neutral zone right now. That's fair. 
So do you have like a wand? <laughs> uh, do you have to say the spells out loud? Is everything Latin? Do did you major in something? Annabelle, when um, there's a reason you don't know about this stuff. It's because it's something that only they can do. Oh. And it's something they keep very secret. Right. Um, it's, you know how we talked about each of the clans having powers? Uh -huh. You have your abilities, I have my abilities. Uh -huh. There's, they're one of, at least to my knowledge now, granted I'm not very old, are the only ones who do what they do. To my knowledge. That's really cool. You know, I guess this is probably a good time to, to ask, though. I, I heard about Prague. I heard about things recently. Uh, the Tremere are going through a bit of a shakeup. <sighs> and is that why we need to keep their presence in Los Angeles a secret? Because it may not at all be barren. Abrams that they're hiding from, it may be more of your own kind. Yes, well, there are various houses, as you know. I am part of House Carno. What's House Carno? Is that like the smart ones or the brave ones or the... It's not. Do you believe in free will, Annabelle? I do, yes, very much so. Are you against oppression? That sounds a lot like me, yeah. <laughs> That's House Carno. Oh, wow. I, I'm going to be sorted into House Carno. I'm sure you would fit right in. What, what were you fighting against? House... Tremere is not... as... open to free will. They are there to oppress those under them. It's a patriarchy, which we don't want a part of. We have been able to grow in strength ourselves since that Inquisition in Vienna. Hmm. Our uh, chantry was destroyed, but this allowed many inroads for House Karna, so... Tell me if I'm if I'm correct about this, because I am a very novice student of the occult. My understanding of what happened was just like there's the Camarilla with their structure and old way of doing things, and the Anarchs that rejected it, the Tremere were almost a Camarilla within the Camarilla with their own structure, which Karna rebelled against. That's correct. They punish fiercely, which is why they need your protection. If they found us, well, death would be a welcome sight. Which is why you live alone up at the observatory. Clever. So you see, we all. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, obfuscate. Uh, you know, as far as I interpret the map, Griffith Park, at least the observatory portion of Griffith Park, is still very much on the side of the valley, which means you also have our protection. As Thank a you, friend. Annabelle. I mean, fuck the patriarchy, right? I mean, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, our barony, our, our domain, domain, um, I mean, we're in some ways just getting started and we could use all of the friends they can, but we have a lot to offer too. 
Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah. You know, I realize that you've had an eye on our young friend, uh, quite frankly, since before we have. Uh, and I completely agree with everything you just said. I just remind you again, be careful of promises. <laughs> they carry a significant amount of weight. So choose your words carefully, even as I agree with them. Right. But you do agree. Oh, I agree that you are welcome in the valley. And as one of our members of our domain are absolutely under our protection. Yes. Yeah, I don't really I know about the proper parlance for vampire favors or politics. But just from one person to another... I guess. Yeah, I guess we, we should all stay together. So your intention is to keep the Camarilla out? Believe it or not, if there were a way for us to peacefully coexist, I'd be all for it. I just don't see it in the cards. But my hope is when I can speak with Vanivar, perhaps we can find a solution like gentlemen. I actually don't want to see any more kindred blood spilled. I just think that's probably going to be out of my hands. If the Camarilla come here, they will destroy me. Not if you're under my protection. Although, you were going to say something about the Tremere. You're a little choked up. Oh, Maybe yeah, you're allergic sorry. to the rose. Yeah, I don't often oh. deal with flowers. No, what I was going to say was is that, as you can see, not... There's really no exception among kindred of finding ways not to like each other. And we tend to, being gifted with eternal life or unlife or whatever you want to call it, Spend a lot of it finding reasons to hate each other. I mean, that's true of humans, too. It's just on a shorter time scale, right? Yeah. And there is the not insignificant aspect of the beast, mm -hmm. which compels us all. Marcos did something to me. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. I don't know what it was. I was, the, the hunger, mm -hmm. he made it happen. It looked familiar. <sighs> How? It sounds like blood magic. It's certainly something we can do that would suggest either he was, Tremere. He was not. He didn't look like Tremere. He didn't fight like Tremere. Or someone taught him. I'd be interested to know who. Yeah, seeing as the people who, at least from my knowledge, who teach out of clan tend to be aligned with you. It's true. Do you think they're like a magic teacher in the city? I don't know who that could be. House Karna over the other houses is much more open to teaching those with an aptitude some of our magic. The other houses, it's very rare. That's why this is so surprising. It is the source of your power. If it were spread too widely, then Tremere becomes less significant. So I understand keeping the old rights to yourselves. Ooh. As an example, Nelly. She's a Toreador. All of those things she does, those powers she uses, the spider climb, all of those things are not things that Toreadors do. How did you learn them? I don't know. Neither do I. It seemed rude to ask. 
but she's, strictly speaking, not supposed to know how to do all of those wonderful things she does. And speaking of her, you know her better than any of us. Something seem off to you? Where is she? I'd prefer to talk about that in private. Mm-hmm. But she's dealing with the fallout of our trip to the Grove. Which, I guess, brings us all back around full circle as to what has brought you over here on this fine night. True. Because uh, in the time that I've known you, brief though it may be, uh, I've not known you to depart from the halcyon hills of the Griffith Park Observatory to come down here. I've never had much reason to. You did me a great favor. I wanted to check on the sisters. They seem safe, thanks to you. And I wanted to see what I could offer you. Or rather, let you know what I could offer you. That would be wonderful. Wards of many kinds. Ghouls, wards against vampires. Lupine. You name it. Well, as Victor said, at the moment, I think we're not in need of any specific magics. She did just say wards against kindred. That means things that keep kindred out. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Seems at this point in time that's very important. Had to put my two cents in. Jasper, intelligence plus occult, please. Include your hunger dice, of course. How how long do these things take? Like, say we're like, oh, we're in trouble. You know, how much lead time do you need? It depends on the ward. Six successes. Six successes. In the research that you have been doing. Mm Mm-hmm. You are familiar with those wards, at least by name. Mm -hmm. And you know that there are wards on objects. Mm -hmm. There are also barriers that make it difficult for those entities to cross. They aren't foolproof, Mm -hmm. but they're very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. The Canite ward, the Kindred ward, however, is extraordinarily powerful magic. Not easy to come by. No. It would be a significant favor. Yeah. I... Would say that uh, we should kindred proof the club that our dear Ella here has she is severely underplaying the value of what she is offering. A canine ward is very, very powerful. Oh. Well, in the interests of actually. Let me take one step back. When I interact with Miranda, I interact with her not as an individual, but as the person that speaks for the ministry. Do you speak for Tremere in the Valley, or do you only speak for yourself? I only speak for myself. Soon. Free will and all. Free will and all. Soon, we will have a new location in the Valley and I believe I would prefer to leave these protective measures for wherever our new home is going to be in our new domain. So, while this club is definitely important to me and I wish no harm to come to it, I would rather not Death Star-proof the club. (laughs) This in Hollywood. Yes. And leave the new domain vulnerable. And Nellie... Has she dealt with her spirit problem? Her haunting. What can you tell us about Nellie's spirit problem? Because she's not very forthcoming about it. Like, I didn't know anything. Did you know anything about, like, that she was seeing no. ghosts? Like, no. That's, I, did you know anything about her seeing ghosts? I do. I know who the ghost is. 
You know who the ghost... Yeah. Why, why didn't you tell us if you knew who the ghost was? It never really came up. That seems like the type of thing that you wouldn't, like, mention that I... You know, sorry, sorry. Well... Annabelle, who's the ghost that is haunting Nellie? Okay, so she kind of went all haunted on us, you know, me and X one time, and I did some research into it, and Petronella Feliz was supposed to be the rightful owner of Griffith Park and all of the Griffith lands. Like her family, the Feliz family, they owned all of it, like thousands, tens of thousands of acres. But then her father fell ill and she, in some of these stories, was blind and so she was, and was, was a young girl and completely taken advantage of by... Her uncle? Well, in the stories I read, it was a neighbor, Don Antonio. Mm. And he supposedly strong-armed her father into signing away all of the land to him. Mm. And he sold it to the Griffiths, and she got nothing. Right. Yeah, but if that's true, why is he so angry? Why is his ghost here? He should have gone on to wherever you go. I, because maybe she supposedly put a curse on the land and said that anybody, anybody who owned it would come to misfortune. And while it was in private hands, dairy farms failed and uh, any sorts of amusement parks failed. Like everything failed until it was donated and became Griffith Park. And supposedly there's an adobe hut there. Now it's, it's the, the Crystal Springs Ranger Station that used to be her home, and it's still there. Crystal Springs. And like, this is all, I went on a real Wikipedia deep dive here, like just going from one page to the other, and there's all these like supernatural sites and occult sites, but there's not, I didn't think it would. That's very I mean, I guess if there's magic and there's vampires and <laughs> werewolves, then maybe there's ghosts? Well, I mean, there is absolutely ghosts. Yes. We saw them. Yeah, ghosts are a thing. Yeah. And curses? They're you not... can do many things. Yeah. That's very interesting, Annabelle, that you would say that about the curses. I mean, this is, you know, there's they don't know where she's buried, but supposedly she died in that house. This is like, the ring or something, we're gonna go find the body in the well. Maybe. Seems it would be worth visiting. Ooh, I, I don't mean Spirits to. Spirits can be warded against too. Nellie should be back tomorrow night. Um, clearly this is her family affair. I, I would rather talk with her before we do anything. Do let um, her know. Hmm. I, I don't mean to be rude. Um, I would hate to ask a lady her age, but have you been in Griffith Park since that happened? How long ago was that? Uh, 1860s, 18, 1850s, something like that. Definitely not. You look fantastic. I Thank know. Like, you. Like this is the, mm, yes, definitely. But, uh, hmm? Good save. It Ah, sir, it's Campbell. Uh, yeah, Campbell. Miss Kyoko would, would like to join you for a minute. Is that all right? Is that all you? right? Can I let her in? Of course. Does She's she have own. any fire? Hang on just a second, sir. <laughs> no, sir. No fire. Then we're fine. Uh, yes, please. Let her in. Certainly. Campbell opens the door. He looks very fatigued. It doesn't look like he's had a good night's sleep in, say, two nights. <laughs> but uh, he is still the model of professionalism. He opens the door, and Kyoko, who you will recall is one of the three Tremere that you rescued from the Grove, one of the Weird Sisters coterie. Uh, she appears to be a young, petite uh, Asian girl with uh, a black motocross leather jacket and motorcycle boots. She enters, waves. Hey, hey, Ava, hi, how you doing? She uh, approaches you and bends down for a hug. 
I'll give her a hug. Hey, look, I'm sorry. I haven't changed clothes in, like, what is it, Ben? Nights? <laughs> and somebody doesn't have a washer dryer here, so. I mean, I if know. you just want clothes, just tell Campbell what you want. We can get yeah. anything. We have a fashion designer who lives here, like. Where? I mean, she's not, like, here, here. But you just tell Campbell literally anything you want. Mm -hmm. We'll get it taken care of. Hey, sorry to bust up your, your confab. Um, just, um. Well, I was bored. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> How are you? Oh. Hi, yeah. Kyoko. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can you do anything yeah. about this? Mm, I don't believe they can mm. do anything about this. If we could, we would. Sorry. It's fine, Kyoko. Looks a little better. It is a little better. She crosses the room to stand next to you and bends down and peers very, very closely and unflinchingly at the wounds. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to take a while. You know, Kyoko, I wasn't aware you, Tremere, did things like that. <laughs> can, can, I, can I tell him? Yes, I think you can. Well... I'm really onto something. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you saw. I mean, I did. I can't do a lot yet. Just that. But right. I mean, I started out with like a candle flame, and then. Well, that was more than a candle flame. Yeah, I got a little carried away. <laughs> it was. It was impressive. I will say. Thanks. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, it's something I'm researching. I'm. I'm under the impression that it was more common until our recent problems. Uh. And um, the knowledge isn't, um, it's not really out there anymore. Making fire? Yeah. It's a little more than making fire. Mm, yeah, yeah didn't he tell you? This is how he got, I mean, I, I did that. Y yeah, I know, yeah. but like I, <laughs> I didn't. Did yeah, I'm so sorry. I thought like fire spells were, I mean, that's the first thing you'd like. Is this the first thing you learn in what? <laughs> no, no, no. The first thing you learn is all about blood. Vite. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it's always about blood. You know, Hogwarts. I have a question for both of you. What's up? So are we like, casting some stuff or what's going on? We are no, so you're absolutely right not in, no, not in this play. I, please, yeah, no. Yeah. Just, we'll please have don't. questions for you later, Kyoko. Yeah, come on. We're just, um, and we, we really appreciate the, the accommodations. I mean, it's very kind of you to put us up. They will be able to assist in any wards. Oh yeah, I can do a ward. I can totally keep your keep ghouls out of here. Well, it, no, no I need. I definitely need I ghouls put, inside. Yeah, I can no. put a ward on an, uh, like a thing, mm -hmm. like um, like uh, like your jacket like, like or your phone it's or whatever. And if a ghoul tries to touch it, boom. Right. Hmm. Oh, that's good to know because this is yeah. always nearby. I do have a question for you both You're actually. Going to don't waste a word on your I, phone. She's, uh, His phone is very First of all, important. that is very important. That is very important. Yeah, but you're going to need to upgrade in like a year or something. I mean, I've already got the V12 model. It's like I got it out of Korea. That's not important. Uh, my, I do have a question for the two of you. A little while back, we ran across some thin bloods that were doing some blood alchemy. Oh, I've heard uh, that. They were making drugs. You guys know anything about that? That they were seen it in San Diego. Oh. It was. It was weird. I, I, mm. they had a, a. It looked almost like an old timey still, and there was a corpse, and there were boiling things, and something was like dripping out, and can he was. I, can I? Should I tell him? Yes. Um, Kyoko, before you say anything. Just as a point of order, when you ask someone else in company of people who don't know if you can tell them something, that generally means you know something. Oh, I know. I know, just you're putting Eva on the spot. Also, apparently... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> apparently you do, in fact, speak for Tremere, by the way. No, I... The answer is always... She doesn't speak yeah, for me. It's just polite. Kyoko is her own. Continue, Kyoko. It's very polite. 
please. Um, <laughs> well, we've seen it in San Diego a lot. There are a lot of thin bloods down there. I'm not sure why, but um, more than a few. And um, they can do exactly what you're talking about. Um, they call it blood alchemy, though, not magic. Mm. And it's a little bit of magic, but it's also kind of like chemistry. And it's kind of like this really twisted uh, high school science experiment fair thing. Um, they use blood and all kinds of weird ingredients. Like, I saw one thin blood. She distilled this, I don't know, concoction, this liquid. Um, and she used lighter fluid. And um, she took a Brillo pad and, and crushed it up into little metal shavings. And, um, oh, and blood, a lot of blood. Um, and some of her own vitae and um, flower petals, like daisy petals, and cooked it down in like a, like, a, like, a, like a pressure cooker. And then she drank it. And then she could fly. What? Kind of like, kind of like, like, more like hover. It, the one I saw, he held his hand out and was able to like move things with his mind. Like he pulled the gun right out of my hand. Like telekinesis. I, yeah, I was. So gonna you say, can I was, just. I was get, gonna say like the. Forest, those are pretty but, ordinary but ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's no, it's a thing they can do. But how is it that these humans, these, they're not even kindred. They're like ghouls plus. How are they doing things that you all cannot do? We don't uh, know. Human ingenuity. We don't really know. Who said we couldn't? Yeah, who said we couldn't? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, no, but you can't, though, so. Uh. <laughs> oh. I mean, I haven't tried. Have so you? where are they learning all of this stuff? Yeah, that's not something you just sort of, like, try. You're like, daisy petals and Brillo pads. I'll be able to fly. That's cool. We're not, we're not really sure about that either, but we know, you know, we know that... There are formula. There are, I guess you'd call them recipes. We've seen some of them. And I guess it's a lot of trial and error or experimentation. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, I saw like a, uh, she had a notepad, just like a legal pad, and she had these, these instructions written on it that she was keeping track of. In San Diego? Yeah. We didn't see one of those. No. At the house. Well, I, be, I, I bet they had one. Well, the whole Holy thing burned down, though. Holy so. shit. What? What? Did Carver ever ask you about the Thin Bloods? You know Carver? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kyoko. Intimately. Wow, small world. Do you, you know, know Carver? Carver? Yeah, no, I mean not really well. He was in he was in San Diego um, a few months ago, and he was asking about the Thin Bloods. Wanted to meet some. Did you introduce him? Uh, not me. I, the one I told you about, she's kind of my friend. I mean, is she fleeing San Diego too? And believe me, we need to come back to why everybody's fleeing San Diego. But for now, I don't, I don't really know what happened to her. Maybe she's still there. I don't know. We didn't. It's not safe to. I mean, oh God, I really miss Facebook. Um, but it's not safe. I mean, I can get you on Facebook. Is that you? Just need a secure phone. It's, it's not fine. safe. You're better without it. <laughs> it's. It depends on what you post. Not. Safe. No, it's not safe. I mean, safe's overrated. That's how they find you, you know, the government. I mean, don't ask him for it. Yeah. He's, he doesn't do things. Never. Do you still read news from Facebook, too? I make news on Facebook. Oh. Hey, um, do you know that there's, like, um, rats in your basement, like a lot of them? Yeah, they clean <laughs> the place up for us. How interesting. Okay. I mean, you can throw fireballs, so that, that shouldn't seem like an oddly incredulous thing for you to hear. You want me to burn the rats? I absolutely no. do not. I'm just saying you do oh, magical okay. things, so we're just full Fantasian here. The next thing, you might see a mop mock walking by. Even I don't know what's going to happen. 
Kyoko, you don't know who taught the Thin Bloods? No. But. But. I'm pretty sure they're teaching each other. I'm pretty sure these, these recipes, they're circulating. If you still have contact with your friend, yeah. and, and they're trying to get out of San Diego also, let them know they can come to the valley too. I actually have an interest in reaching out to some of the Thin Bloods, because I've seen what happens when they have no direction. Are you sure? Nobody likes these guys. You know, but maybe we're wrong Why? about that. Why is everybody so freaked out? Is this some prophecy? They're a sign of the apocalypse, that's why. Oh, that's the... I mean... Why? Really? Look, I'm not an overly... You don't like them because they're a, there's like a prophecy and there's a sign of the apocalypse. I am not an overly religious person, but just imagine, just hypothetically... That is exactly what a religious person no, would say. Hear me out. Imagine if just hypothetically somebody was like, hey, when the sky turns green, it's the end of the world. And you're like, that's not a thing. That's not going to happen. And then you go bopping outside and the sky is green. We've always heard there would come a time when the blood was too thin for them to create new vampires, when we could not keep procreating, and that was the end. And they're here doing the things that were written in the book, so... I not even begin to tell me how many logical fallacies were in what you just said right oh, now. I didn't say it was logical. I said it was prophesied. This is and what they call the vampire. Gehenna thing. That. Yeah. The end. Yeah, I don't believe it. I mean, I used to not. Well, either way, they're... You, hey, people Jasper, are you, are you okay? Yeah, I'm... Oh. It itches. Oh... I'm sorry. It's fine. But yes, I would like to reach out to them. I would like to try and be better because I've been just as guilty as looking down on them as half-breed abominations, but... And I'm might I point out that it's not always good when groups of oppressed people, thin bloods, have to go through that repeatedly. I don't think it would bode well for any of us not to hear them out. I worry who may have influence over them now, where they're learning this. And if there are many of them, and they're using vast amounts of blood, I'd be interested in where and how they were acquiring it. What were you going to say about Carver? Yeah, what were you going to say about Carver? I mean, he was asking about the Thin Bloods. He had so much of an interest in them. He knows them. He's interested in blood magic. He knows a lot of people, a lot of kindred. He seemed pretty cool. I mean, scary, but cool. We I mean, didn't see a recipe book. Do you think? Yeah, I do. I mean, he is very fast, but I mean, I wasn't myself at the moment, so I don't know. He could have done anything in front of me, and I was... Yeah, you're not yourself when you're hungry. Again, you really are starting to understand what we are. So you think Carver took the recipe book? Yeah, I wouldn't put it past him. But that's not a thing that a bruja, especially one of his age, could do anything with. Well, we're really not sure. If Maybe. it's a recipe. Oh. I don't know. I, I kind of want to try it. I mean, if your abilities can be taught, maybe theirs can too. You can you try you whatever you'd like. I'd be interested in seeing these recipes myself. You know, my, my concern with the Thin Bloods is we went to that house looking for answers and a great deal of violence was done that maybe could have been avoided if someone had reached them earlier. I mean, by the time we got there, they were poisoning children and killing mortals in our domain. Poisoning so, children? Yes. That doesn't sound like... It was happening. And they met the final death because of it. Wow. But if that could be avoided, 
in the future. Said, yeah, we we said to stop what they're doing, and they said that nobody accepted them, that they didn't have home anywhere. Yeah, nobody likes them. Well, <laughs> I would like to try. Well, I mean, there were how, how many? Uh, how many were there? How many did you meet? Two, 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 two one, two. There are two. Of them. They both were. Well, right. I mean. There's bound to be more here. Well, we should reach out to them. We should make it known. Everybody deserves a home. I agree. My uh, my friend in San Diego, she um, she used to visit some here in L.A. Well, if you can put the word out um, that, again, if they're willing to be contributing members of our community, there is a place for them in the valley. What's that mean? Just like the same terms that I offered you. Haven, feeding, in return, when the time comes, if we need you, you'll do your part. My friend said that um, Camarilla, you know, usually kills those guys or uses them. Again, We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't. They would. Hmm. They absolutely would. You saw what they did. I know, but I'm saying we wouldn't. We wouldn't. They wouldn't have to be afraid. Jasper, what do you think? I think saying we wouldn't is a bit naive, seeing as we keep doing things we don't mean to do or don't want to do. But that being said... I mean, you helped us out. We did. Oh, it was awesome, Eva. You should have seen it. It was so cool the way it went down. It was <laughs> it was like something out of a of an action movie. Super cool. I'm sure it was. Yeah. You should see this guy fight. And oh. she she like threw a truck. Oh. You, you did? Yeah. That was badass. Yeah, I threw a truck. Super badass, mm -hmm. and, and I don't see I don't see where you're I don't see where she is, but um, they've got a friend who can. No, she can. She can do some of what she can do some of our stuff. I heard. Yeah, yeah. she's she's pretty badass too. Very capable group, good friends to have. Yeah, I think you chose well for us. <sighs> Can't argue with results. All of that being said. He is trying to do something different. So if that... Oh, Camarilla won't like that. Yeah. But if that difference also happens to include a safe place for thin bloods, it doesn't matter to me. I don't know. Kind of the Alan and Misfit toys, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. Yeah. But again, I don't live there, so... But... Well, would you open your doors to some of these thin buds seem to be using very violent practices? Oh, the, again, I mean a case for case basis. There's still the masquerade must be maintained. Like we can't be having crazy chaos in the streets. But also, but, doing that will piss off a lot of kindred. Well, my concern is imagine what would have happened to her without us. Imagine if she'd been loose for three months, not knowing her powers, not knowing how things are done, not knowing anything. It's really not that hard to imagine. Exactly. And if we can make not that, I, we should. I mean, basically it'd be a domain where they could be judged on a case-by-case -case basis and not on the basis of the fact that they're thin bloods, some like boogeyman from a prophecy. <sighs> More like tiny gremlins from a problem. Yeah, no, they're like ghouls plus. Like, I mean, uh, but it, but apparently they have like feelings and stuff. So I'm trying to be better. Yeah, wow. trying to be better. Uh, How are like you? A, you for real? I'm like trying. A, I'm trying. You have it's weird to me, you know, but I'm trying. Relatives and it's like they're just like yeah. I get it. You're, they're trying, but it's just really awkward. I know. Uh, I. I'm trying. I, uh... Ow. I wonder, there's no chance that, uh... 
that other house could be reaching out to those thin bloods is there. Them? What other house? Oh, wow, that would suck. Yes, it would. Is there like a Slytherin house that's like... They're all no, Slytherin. no, but there, there are some pretty bad ones. I mean, House Goratrix. Ugh. Horrible. What, what do they want with them? What would... What that's... That's not, not the, the one, one we're talking about, though. There's so many Slytherins. <laughs> hey, I mean, Slytherins, I, I, don't get me wrong, Slytherins aren't inherently bad. It's just, you know, they're painted very poorly. But never mind, these the ones book. are inherently which, bad. Which book is oh. your favorite? Oh, I think I like I the all. third one a yeah. lot. Yeah, this. Okay. Yeah. Just always has a special place in my heart. It's got time travel in it. Super cool. You know, this is all fascinating, but I, I, I do want to make sure, is there anything else that I need to know? Because I could spend the rest of the night asking questions, but if I don't know the right questions... Let's do that. Let, maybe, later. Maybe after this part, then you can add. Because again, I get magic is real is kind of like the impetus of a whole lot of stories, but we're going to put that over here for just a second. Because um, I haven't even asked about the dude in the energy case under Griffith Park yet. Like, we haven't even gotten to that. That's how much we need to cover. Oh, what? God. Oh, you yeah. don't know about that? So your dude, he can like get me some new clothes because, yeah. I mean, come on, three nights? The, let, whatever, whatever you want. Okay, all right. Eva, do you need me for anything? Is it cool? Of course. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk to your dude and maybe get some. All three of you, whatever yeah. you need. Did you, again, I can get you back on Facebook if you just want that. I mean, like, again, we have these, like, triple security. Like, it's fine. I'm telling you, dude, it's not safe. It's a that's serious just, security that's like, risk. It's a, again, I don't know what's up with this puritanical turn with you, but it's just because you're like, oh, my God, people know who I am. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That is our shield. That is hey, look, how we survive. That's your shield, Victor. I, I'm telling you, I think... Uh, I was going to say America's ready to see this. They're not. But America's ready to see this movie, though. There's a way. There's an angle. We can package uh, this. We can do this. I'm out of here. Yeah. Bye. She excuses Campbell will take herself care and uh, Campbell if escorts her out. So this seems like a very good place to pause for a short break in our story. We will return shortly. While we're on break, we have something new and... Very cool and fun for you. We'll see you again soon. Hello. Welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night, Season 2, Episode 3, Gentle Manners. We'd like to thank ace photographer Josh Thomas for those wonderful photographs of our vampires that you saw during the break and the uh, sketchbook art that you saw in our recap, well, it was by the amazing Megan Jessup. Thank you very much, Megan. Victor, is it safe to say that the door to the sanctum is watched at all times by a member of Campbell's staff, or maybe by Campbell himself? Heavily. And uh, actually, Campbell roves, because if anybody's watching, I don't want them to mm -hmm. be able to detect a perpetual weak spot. But yes, we have... Extra security, especially over these last couple of nights. Yes. Yes. Okay. Understood. Thank you. So, Kyoko has excused herself, um, no longer wishing to be part of the Facebook discussion. Mm. Leaving the four of you alone once more. You still have not told us why you didn't want Abrams to know. It wasn't that I didn't want him to know. I just thought he wouldn't be as focused on getting it done as you would. Believe it or not, I believe that you have more compassion than Abrams. Hey, you can be a real dick. Is a Tori do I? Mm. <laughs> At least you get things done. Well, One way or another, yes. And yes. you're surrounded by lovely people. Again, cannot argue with results. But I guess my... Now that Kyoko's gone, um, is there anything else I need to know before I meet with my fellow barons that 
might influence their desire to <laughs> find them. Because again, I still don't know how the Camarilla found them or why they cared so much. So is there something more than them being three wayward Tremere sisters, which may in and of itself be its own answer, especially if someone from Tremere knows that they are members of Karna's it, brood group. What do you what do you refer? To? But that, house. house, house, house. Thank you. Jasper. But be that as it may, I can't cover them if I don't know what I'm covering. I think the question is more important. Uh, to look at perhaps if Baron Trace could have had any implication in the Weird Sisters' travel not going as smoothly as planned. I had asked her to uh, grant them safe passage, and since I trust you all more than her. Uh, you think she had something to do with it? She, she's ex's boss, Santa Monica. Yes, and I've heard yes. some very disturbing rumors, unsubstantiated rumors, but disturbing rumors that she has been more receptive to the Camarilla presence uh, in our city than the rest of us. And she is actively expanding her business into Camarilla cities. She is so I've heard. Difficult. You know her? No, she only by reputation. She is. I don't know. She is what she is. She's just. I wouldn't want to deal with her. No, her sister Jeanette, though, Anarch through and through. Jeanette's one of us. Therese, I mean, again, you know, far be it for me to question anyone from making aggressive business decisions, but in, never say this in front of any other Ventru, and if you tell Fiona, I will fiercely deny it, but there are actually some things more important than money. <laughs> Look at you. You're so soft. See, again, don't let the sweater vest fool you. This was just for the police interview. I was trying to look non-threatening. You've uh -huh. worn that vest before. Uh -huh. Yeah. It, you know, you have a couple of vests. The last time I wore this vest was the thing the night things got all gangrely. So I'm actually hoping this will go a little smoother. Yeah. But um, be that as it may, my fashion choices aside, which, for the record, worked. So. Therese. Therese's. Reliability is in question. I and don't know. It's just the only one who was, the only other one besides you all that was involved in this. And uh, I, I hate to say this in an insensitive way, but Therese is a Malkavian like X. And sometimes they make decisions based on things the rest of us wouldn't make decisions based off of. Is Therese X's sire? Have we asked? I know she's his baron. Is he blood to her? Victor, your cell phone buzzes. It is Campbell. He's chosen to text you instead of knock. <clears throat> the text says, Mr. Lamb here from Miss Miranda. Mm, I'm like... Um, I reply to him, I was like, I leave it to your discretion if you show him in or simply deliver the message. And send it back. Everything all right? Um, we have a visitor. A few what? moments later, the door opens. Campbell shows in the individual whom three of you know as Mr. Lamb. Eva, you've not seen this individual before, but he is without a doubt, one of the largest people you have ever seen. Um, if one were to take a dump truck and stand it on its end and give it a human face and squeeze it into a suit until it was nearly bursting at the buttons, you would have a fairly accurate description of Mr. Lamb. He fills the doorway 
to a point where he simply blocks all the light coming through, and he must duck his head under the lintel to wow. step through. I know how rough that is, Mr. Lamb. Uh, it's good to see you. Last time we saw you, things were becoming um, tumultuous. Glad to see you intact. Mr. Temple, Miss Annabelle, Mr. Jasper. Hello. Ava, this is Ava. Miss Ava. Mr. Lamb. A pleasure. I am Mr. Lamb. To what do we owe this pleasure, in fact? Miss Miranda asked me to hand deliver her response to your message. Ah, yes. She decided it was the safest method. Again, you all, with your low tech, I mean, okay, fine, you're, you're not. She sounds uh, intelligent. My, she sounds old. My mistress is both wise and intelligent. And beautiful. Uh-huh. Don't forget beautiful. You know, that is without question. That was, uh... Oh, that was while I was away. Oh, right. uh, Miranda is from the ministry. No, I've, I've, I, I've heard of her. I'm, we've just never met. Ah, it's an experience. I, yeah, I forgot. We did sort of flee the flaming wreckage of her How establishment. Is the Chat Noir? Yeah. As you know, the club is destroyed, but huh? we, my mistress, that is, hopes to rebuild. But again, please express, I've expressed to Miranda, but please doubly convey, if there's anything I can do to help with that, please let me know. I am instructed to wait your response to her message. One other question, Lamb. We left you with a, a couple of guests in the basement. Yes. Would you happen to know if those guests remained in the basement? Oh. I am not permitted to speak of these matters. Fair enough. Again, I'm a fan of loyalty, so I'm not gonna, you know. Again, like, what's up with, like, the wax seal and parchment? I mean, we're not supposed to be Camarilla Lamb. It's very theatrical. <sighs> well, you know what, I guess I'll, I guess I'll read it out loud. Uh, you, full disclosure. You don't trust me? We are what we are, Eva. But full disclosure, one of the very first relationships we formed in the Valley was with the Ministry. Uh, they are attempting to rebrand. They also are trying to change. And in light of the events two nights ago, I reached out to Miranda to let her know because I didn't know to what extent and with what ferocity the Camarilla would react and I wanted her to be prepared. Yeah. This is apparently her response. Okay. My dearest Baron, it was with the greatest joy that I received your recent communique. How marvelous to hear from you and to know that you and your associates are all still quite safe despite the recent unpleasantness. Safe. The waking world can be so tedious with its inconveniences and so incongruence with its need for privacy. So, of course, I know and understand completely that you did not intend for your actions to have any negative repercussions for myself or for any of your associates, obviously. But I fear that is exactly what has transpired. What do they say about good intentions? You all were there for the same thing I saw, so I, I don't know how else we were supposed to play it. Uh, as you know, it was my intention to create a new Lachette Noir in your barony, replacing the establishment that burned that unfortunate night when you accidentally led unwelcome guests straight to my home. <laughs> uh, indeed, I already selected the location and was preparing to invite you to discuss this in the context of our arrangement. However, all permits and permissions for my renovations to the property are suddenly canceled by the city without explanation and are pending review indefinitely. Very quick work for any city, especially on a weekend, is it not? It's a Camarilla, man. That's how they work. They don't they don't attack you right on. They freeze bank accounts. They block permits. It's ugh, it's so stupid. Perhaps you can be of some small assistance in this matter. My courier will provide you with a phone number where you may leave a voice message, but it is not equipped for text messaging. He will also provide you with a location of a place where you may arrange to leave a written w- reply if you prefer to take your time. I await your response with all the eagerness that I can muster yours eternally, M. I appreciate that, Lamb. Um, you read very fast, sir. Well, time is money. Please let her know 
I will send a written response, but I tell you now just not to leave her waiting. I will do everything I can to resolve this for her. I think she will appreciate that. Yes. Um, and no text messages. That's quaint. Is it like old, like flip, like pow, like a... Some don't like talking about kindred affairs via such hackable devices. We've got security, and what happened if he dropped this envelope? Like, that would not a, happen, it, sir. It, you know what? I, Mr. Lim would not it, let like, that happen. I meant it more on a theoretical global level, but be that as it may, yes, I will reply in more detail shortly, but I will assist Miranda to the best of my ability. I will convey your response. Yes, thank you. And again, glad to see you're all right. You did, yeah. Do you need anything before you go to the club? You talk to Campbell. You are very kind to offer, sir, but <clears throat> I am well. Hmm. Excellent. Uh, well, was there anything else then? Because we have to... I shall excuse myself. Always a pleasure, Mr. Lamb. Baron Temple. Miss hmm. Eva. Miss Annabelle. Mr. Jasper. So Goodbye, Mr. Lamb. Say hi for me. I shall do this. He crosses to the door, and again, it's a little bit like watching one of those extensible, you know, cranes trying to slip under an overpass without wrecking the concrete as it goes under. Uh, eventually, though, he does make it outside and negotiates his way. You know, that's saying something, because I got wide doors in this place on purpose. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a big guy. I appreciate that. I don't run into many guys bigger than me. Ooh. That's mm. impressive, to say the least. That's terrifying. Because, you know, when we faced up against Blaine and his gang, like, we could deal with some meathead that came swinging at us and was shooting at us but how do you fight against something that's an unseen force that owns everything? Precisely my point in wanting us to be more careful. And that is your area of expertise, how to deal with those things I don't deal I mean, with, we can't, though. We can't shoot at a foreclosed mortgage or, you know, dirty police force. Well, I guess while we're sharing things. Um, the Camarilla also have um, these people that are called Justicars that are particularly powerful kindred. They think of them like nuclear weapons basically that they can call in. Um, so yeah, it's hard to fight them directly. It's hard to fight them indirectly. Um, it is very difficult. And to tell you the truth, I say this in front of you right now, we can't outmuscle them at all, at all, at all. But what we can do is outmaneuver them. They are very old, and they are very stalled in their thinking. They have a very 17th century approach to the world. And the fact that we do not is our advantage. It is, quite frankly, our only advantage. It's a wonderful point. They're stuck in their ways. I mean, I said it before and I said it again. The tide of history always marches forward. Progress is always going to win out over the old ways. I agree. Except there is a non-zero chance that progress is the thin bloods, not us. That's possible. And we work to make a better world for all of us. That is my hope. And I have reached out through what channels that I can because I'm still willing to talk to Vannevar. I am. Uh, he's declared his domain in Beverly Hills. That's not my problem. If Abrams and Therese want to let him carve off a chunk of their domain and set up his little tower, fine by me. Keep that shit on the other side of the hill, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so, but... Again, I think as we look back over the history of the Camarilla, knowing their limits and respecting their own boundaries has not been their strong suit. And quite frankly, it's not the Anarch strong suit either. The fact that Abrams and Therese and Nines existed peacefully for as long as they did is anomalous. But. And yet. 
Yeah. There's... What? That's why I... do what I do, because he does what he does. And he does that stuff. So that's why we work together. That's why even though... Uh, Nellie and I don't get along necessarily she does things that I don't do and that he doesn't do and so we find ways to work together that's why we formed this coterie that's what part of life as a dead thing is finding other dead things that do things you don't do and then you make a big dead thing party well, I think that is far more dramatic than necessary. We've covered each other multiple times. You've seen us cover each other multiple times. That is, at the risk of another 80s movie cliche, which I deeply resent, the five fingers that make the fist. We're capable of things together that we cannot do alone. That's true. I just feel like you shouldn't have to rely on one person to do the uh, soul-sucking killing. I mean, we do our fair share of souls like Kelly. I mean, not you. I mean, Nellie. She's usually my right Thank hand. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Eva, it is at this point that you notice another rat. It might be the same one who entered earlier. It might be a different one. It's hard to tell. It is near your feet, and it is looking up at you with its little dark, rodenty eyes with great curiosity, as though absorbing every detail. Question. Can I scry the soul of a rat? It's an interesting point. You can try. Is that you'd like to do it? I'd like to try. I will roll for you. I will include your Thank hunger. You. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. X scryed a rat's ear, so I think this is uh, this all seems legit. <laughs> hmm. That is a respectable number of successes. <laughs> so, you stare back at the rat. You open your eyes wide. You allow your senses to cross the veil of normal sight and into that preternatural space where things unseen to ordinary eyes become clear to you. Are you talking with the rat? Is this like parcel talking about for rats? The rat is no ordinary rat. The rat has consumed kindred vitae. It is a ghoul. And you know, of course, that when a vampire gives its vitae to a mortal, they become a servant. They are imbued with a portion of the vampire's power. They are stronger, sometimes faster, certainly no longer normal. This rat is one such creature. You do not, however, understand the colors in its aura well enough to discern its emotional state. It's not like reading the emotions of a, of a mortal or another vampire. It's confused and faint, and the colors make no sense to you at all. So you're not sure exactly what it's feeling at this time. Um, nor does it possess any particular resonance in its blood. You suspect that if one were to taste it, it would taste like a rat. But you are absolutely certain that it's a ghoul. This and rat belongs to some other vampire. Okay. And I know that to be normal of... Do I know that to be normal of certain... I don't think you do. Things? Uh, what, uh, what you doing? 
Why are there rats here again? We have uh, a gangrel associate who keeps an eye on some things for us. And they often that's the rat pack. employ rats. Yeah. Which you've seen them talk to rats. Like, I mean, like, that's a thing you've observed. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Is it still at my feet? Still there, although um, it's no longer paying attention to you. The rat is now picking up flower petals that have dropped from the flowers that you have brought as gifts for the coterie, collecting the little petals into its paw. This is a ghoul. Yeah. Yeah. Ghoul rat. And you... Mm Mm-hmm. ...know that. Whose is it? Yeah, it seems like it would be improper to say. If they wish to meet, I'm sure you'll have ample opportunities. But yeah, no, the the rats the rats are good. Well, they've sent their rat to collect my flower petals. I do text Ramona. And what is the text message? I'm like, I just reply, are you seeing this? Question mark. <laughs> the reply is Nice sweater vest. Uh, I reply again, uh, are we keeping you a secret? Because you sent the rat. Upside down smiley face. (laughs) Your phone rings. Mm -hmm. Ramona's number comes up on the display. I put her on speakerphone, and I'm like, you're on speakerphone, oh, rat master. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Ramona. No, hey, I'm Ramona. not seeing anything, Victor. Just pulling your leg, Undad. I just guessed about the sweater vest. <laughs> you know, it's it's fifty fifty. Was that or a suit? So I'm with. Oh, oh. Hold on. You're Jasper. not seeing anything. Hi, Ramona. You're not seeing anything. Yeah, because there's rats here. Yeah. Those there's are rats, rats everywhere. Yeah, but of course it's mine. Right. Okay. Good. Good, 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 good. That's good, good. what we were making sure of. Yeah, because we were, things were going to take a very different turn. Yeah, I don't uh, think they, I don't, you can't, like, see through their eyes or something, right? Right? Well, as a matter of fact. I mean, I assumed you could, because why send them places? <laughs> I mean, I felt that was implied. Like, I mean, why else send the rest? <laughs> Which is much more logical. I was about to say, that's somehow more acceptable? I uh, been, like, still, like, actually seeing, though. You guys got to step up her education. Just, you know. I just assumed she was smarter. I just, yeah, that one I felt, again. That How was, was okay, I was supposed to guess that somebody can see through a rat's eyes. And talking to them seemed like, you know what, we'll come, we'll come back to the intricacies okay, of Okay, it's the difference between like getting a text about something and like actually seeing video footage of it. No, you're on your own on this one, but uh. Hey look, Victor, um, sorry to break up your yeah. lessons. Look, um, campus. Yeah. Reporters, people asking questions, looking yeah. around for mm-hmm. uh, baby bee. <laughs> Did you see the Baby Bee video? Yeah! <laughs> How great is the Baby Bee video? That was awesome. <laughs> Annabelle, you look uh, great. Right? More of that. Yeah! Oh Tell her. Super. She'll be famous. Yeah. Right. But uh, well, I showed it to the pack. They loved it. Video? You know, uh, we do have a guest here. Uh, yes. Again, Ramona of House Tremere. Or, sorry, Ava of House Tremere. <laughs> Uh, if you would like to introduce yourself, I'd leave up to you that. Nah, that's okay. You probably should have mentioned that before, yeah. Well, where it is, you're the, one, you're the one that had eyes in the room. He does these things. Yeah. He so. just, anyway. you just, know? anyway. Can I see the name on the phone? What mm-hmm. name do you, what name comes up when uh, Ramona's number rings? Mickey. Mickey. <laughs> Says Mickey. Uh, look. I'll let you get back to your meeting. Just wanted you to know people are asking questions, of yep. course. Um, I have a request for you. We sort of shut down the thin blood business. If you see somebody starting it back up again, would you let us know? You bet. Cool, 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 cool. You're doing an excellent job. I know. Yeah. Hey, you want an album contract? DJing, there's still time. Serious? Yeah, hundred percent. We'll talk about it later. What's my What's my stage name? I hang up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have a head of security that keeps an eye on things. And 
Also, yes, a video. I guess literally keeps an eye on things then. Yeah. That's Again, how did I, I'm with a you? Video, I thought that was a video of what? I thought it was common knowledge that people could see through rats' eyes. We had there's a video, a live stream video. Yeah, it's kind of incredible. It's kind of incredible. Victor has a habit of liking to hide in plain sight. Please don't ever film me. <laughs> I'm like, you know, if I could. <laughs> don't toy with me. If you want to learn to not be seen. I'll think about it. I don't understand why anybody would want to not be seen. <sighs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, Annabelle, I think you're doing very well. Thank you, Ava. I appreciate it. You remember when I said there were those that had, you know, the powers we talked about, and there was one that had to do with animals? I thought that hers was talking to animals. No, there's all different things you can do with that. I mean, she becomes an owl. You've seen it happen. Yeah, I know, but I didn't think that she could, like, see through their eyes or something. Well, I mean, let's put it to you this way. You remember you remember what I do, where I, I'm just not seen. Yeah. I don't... It's not really invisible. It's more of... People just don't look at me. Huh. But now, the way mine works, and why I'm marginally safer on Victor, I don't show up on cameras when oh. I do that. Now others, like me, who, lucky for them, have a different type of ability, which they get to wear whatever face they want. Can, can you learn to do that? Mm, not now, not that I know of. My power works differently. Everyone's works slightly differently, and Ramona's works the way hers does. So someone with the power over animals like Ramona has could have very different powers than Ramona does, but it's the still the same kind of thing. Just different subtle. So if there's ever a rat when I'm having private time, then like... Again, how did you Why would you have know private that? time in front of a rat? Because like she's keeping an eye on things. Okay, Literally. you know what? I don't want to talk about this Just anymore. Just... No further questions. Put the rat outside. What the have rat you done? Seems to have taken the hint <laughs> and <clears throat> his <laughs> it cleared its throat. <laughs> Little rat tie. <laughs> <laughs> the rat vanishes into a dark corner and is not seen. It's a random thing to get. Through. It did take the flower petals, however. <sighs> um what else? Actually, you know, I do have a question. There is someone under the ground in Griffith Park with magical stuff. Doesn't surprise me. You don't know about, like, I mean, yeah, but you didn't know about, uh, wait, hang on. You know what? I don't care. There's, like, a Nosferatu dude with, like, a big scar and he's wearing like 80s clothes and there was like reddish magicalist stuff that she was able to walk through. I didn't try because I didn't want to, you know, die again. Uh, but we didn't like touch him or stuff because I figured somebody put him to sleep for a reason. But that's not that's not ringing any bells that there's like a magically suspended dude basically right underneath the observatory. Victor. You remember the whole not sharing <laughs> we just had people's this discussion. secrets? That whole conversation I just had with you. We literally just had this discussion. We can table it. Fine. But while we're here, you haven't heard anything. 
No, I knew there was something special. <laughs> magical about Griffith Park. That's why I like staying there. Well, it seems like it's haunted too, I guess. <laughs> And the lupine. How do you... What? The wards. I guess that's why the lupines haven't eaten you. Maybe I'm not that tasty. I've found they're not too picky, but okay. I will uh, <laughs> allow you to have your secrets. Great. Cool, cool, cool. Eva, now that... Apparently I don't get to have anything to myself. You said you didn't know. You did. I asked. You I know don't. what I said. Mm. You don't have to share if you don't want to, Jasper. And there's a place under Griffith that it's where I live. There's a labyrinth down there. Really? And they stumbled their way into it one night and had a rather unpleasant evening. We were trying to rescue him. From absolutely nothing. I was not in any sort of danger. We didn't know that. Anyway, that's what he's referring to. Thank you. You're welcome. And for the future, well, I guess it isn't a problem anymore. You've told everybody all of my secrets that you knew, so. It's true, everyone I, knows. I didn't say you live down there. I said there was a dude in suspended animation down there. The one does not imply the other. But now she knows that there's a place underneath Griffith. I would assume a you. person of your power and caliber almost certainly would have detected it already. There's a lot going on at Griffith Park. You'd what? also be surprised about how often people just don't notice things when no one talks about them. <laughs> it's been a lot of talking lately. But I'd be curious to see it, though. It sounds like it houses some interesting... Oh, yes. Very interesting secrets. A labyrinth sounds quite magical. Well, I bet I bet Jasper J Jasper could could probably show you. Maybe in exchange for something that Jasper would like to know from you. <laughs> Seems I already owe Eva some things. We make a habit of owing each other favors. Oh. It would seem. It would. We can talk about that later. Victor. Again, your phone buzzes. Mm -hmm. Another text message. This one from Abram's number. Mm -hmm. The text message reads, on my way. I reply at the club. His reply is, I know. I text Campbell that we have an honored guest coming. Show him in. Uh, apparently, Abrams is on the way here. Point of order. Last night, I... Well, not last night, the night before. Hmm. Was not a good night for me. And I was a little... Maybe... On fire? Yes, but after that... I was a little loopy, you would say. Mm -hmm. And I happened to mention something about why this might be happening. Mm -hmm. Let's not mm -hmm. mention that again. Mm -hmm. Not in front of company. Not in front of company who may have specifically... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Huh? We uh, each other. Is there any reason why you should not be around when uh, Baron Abrams arrives? You're welcome to be here, but is there any reason that you would not like to be here? 
No, I'd be curious to see what he asks of you and how you respond. <laughs> Already ready for showtime. Yeah. Uh, well, again, uh, less is more. Please, 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 please don't volunteer. Please. And just because I'm going to have to spell it out in case, because apparently I have to spell things out now. Don't say anything about Tara. Of course. You know, sorry, I spent the last few months having every single thing I cared about blasted to the world, so I guess I'm just slightly less sensitive about that sort of thing now. I don't know. Sorry. Two wrongs don't make a right, Dad. Tara? Womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, Tara. The one from San Diego. We, they didn't tell it. Why is everyone leaving San Diego? Because we've met a few people leaving San Diego. I'd assume because the Camarilla are arriving. That's probably a good assumption. I guess, but I mean, it's like, you know, San Diego's like been there a minute. I don't, I don't understand why, but okay, all right. I mean, I'd heard, I'd heard they had a Baron that was collaborating. Like, that's the word on the waves, so. I'm... Not often on the waves. Well, I feel like we've plied you with questions all night. You know, I still can get some answers about Patrick-related things, but I... You, you can ask any time. Okay, well, I feel like, I mean, what do you want? What are you hoping for? What do you want in a home here? What are you trying to do? Like, you have all of this great magic, and... I just want to keep surviving as I am with this great magic and freedom. I do not want to return to the Camarilla. What happened there? Being told when and what you can feed on and being controlled at all times. You make one wrong move, who knows what'll happen to you. Enslavement, maybe, if you're lucky. I don't understand why anyone keeps it up. I don't know either, but we're trying to make it better. And and I don't know all the history of this Camarilla, Ria, Camarilla, Camarilla versus Anarchs, but I think we're on the side of whoever allows for free will. To a certain extent. To a certain extent. But... I feel like this was implied before, but just before Abrams arrives. Welcome to the valley. Thank you. I feel like I should make a note. So, your phone buzzes, and Campbell lets you know. He's here. Please show him in. Yes, sir. We're gonna get you on that. Yeah. Actually, I stand to greet him when he comes in. Baron Abrams. Campbell opens the door. Abrams walks in. Looks at you all. Eva. You remember Eva. Oh, we've met. 
great to see you again. You look wonderful. And you as well. Bet you expect me to yell at you. No. Well, you were wrong! It's exactly what I'm going to do. Walk me through it. The Camarilla launched an encroachment on your domain, which we stopped for you. That's more or less what happened. Grove, not in my domain. Fairfax is neutral ground, has been for a while. Everybody was happy to leave it that way. We do have video footage of... Oh yeah, I know. I've seen it, baby bee. <sighs> Uh, here's the thing, Baron. <clears throat> we were tasked with, um, assisting some refugees. That refugees? Were, yes. That were trying to make their way safely through Los Angeles. And they were held up by the Camarilla at the Grove. We went and got them out of there. There was a sheriff, although there is an interpretation of things that there actually is no Camarilla sheriff right now that attempted to interfere, met the final death, we all escaped, masquerade maintained, it's fine. I mean, it's not at all fine in the sense that Vannevar Thomas is probably not gonna see it as fine, but in a, to the extent to which it is your problem, if fine exists at the bright center of the galaxy, you're on the planet that's farthest from it. So. We are on the planet that's farthest from it. Because here's what I would like to ask, sir. If Van of you better Thomas, make this good. If Van of Thomas feels like he can send his hitters around with impunity, why don't we hit back? Why don't we call nines? Why don't we call Therese? Why don't we force him to talk? Or this is what we this is what we've been preparing for. It's here. Why don't we handle this? We can handle it diplomatically or not diplomatically, but why don't we handle it? We don't have to shut sit up and wait. Miss Eva, you wanted to say something? Just out of character. Is there a way to discreetly use truth of blood? <laughs> Say one more time what it is you want to use. Truth of blood uh, towards discreetly. Baron Abrams, yes. Unfortunately, it is very visible. Okay. It requires the blood to be held in a container and your hand to be placed in it. It would be instantly obvious that you were doing magic. Now, the nature of the magic might not be apparent to anyone who isn't familiar with it, or schooled in the occult or possessed of blood sorcery, but it would be impossible to conceal what you are doing. So and am I aware of Baron Abrams' knowledge of the occult? Mm. Well, you've done some blood sorcery for him from time to time as part of your arrangements. You can't be sure he doesn't know. It would be a risk. Okay, I'll hold off. <laughs> Sir, if I may. You may. We'll we get back to you and fine. We have video footage of this upstart sheriff ordering open fire by civilians on one of our own. Let's get to the important thing. Who are the refugees? Jasper, who are the refugees? The refugees are three kindred Fleeing whatever chaos is in San Diego. Yeah, place is a mess. That's all. Hmm. So.
so you went to get him out of trouble. Yeah. They Why? were trying to come to uh, our fledgling barony. Oh, you stocking up? Apparently. Just looking for a safe place to be. We can't hold the valley with four people. So, they were coming here, or there more accurately, got stopped on the way and asked us to help them. Unfortunately, it went very, very south, as you can see. And I pull back my hood to show the side of my face. It's all black and charred. That looks like it hurts. It does, sir. How'd you do that? Fire, sir. No kidding. What, did he have a blowtorch? Just a unfortunate accident involving something that caught on fire. Fine. Jasper. Mm -hmm. Where are the refugees now? The refugees now? <laughs> Sir, I have been at home since that night. Yeah? Trying to recuperate. I only just re came back here tonight, and I honestly do not know where the refugees are. Going to have to try to deceive him. Okay. Let's make it. Are you trying to be earnest, charming, persuasive? I'm trying to just be matter of fact and <clears throat> deliver information. Let's make it wits and persuasion. Jasper Lee. <laughs> 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 not, nice, go back in the tray. <laughs> not my role. <laughs> Two successes. Two successes, okay. That's almost the highest I could have rolled. <laughs> I see. In 1944, McNeil and Garcia let us We eliminated the last prince who tried to call Praxis here. It was a bloodbath. And a lot more kindred died than lived through it. And the reason we don't go sailing off into the night, guns blazing, fists flying, is because nobody wants that to happen again. Now then. We will fight them. We will throw their jack-booted thugs out of the city. But we will have a plan and a strategy, and you don't get to decide either of those by yourself. Am I clear? That's why I called you, Baron. Uh, to be accurate, sir. The sheriff that perished. We didn't have much of a choice. Self-defense. Self they came guns blazing at us. At us. And um, unfortunately, Miss Annabelle here was in danger. And since we are here to teach her and protect her, you decided that executing the sheriff would be the best lesson. Well, it was more of a reaction than a plan, but in the moment, it seemed like the most direct path in ending the danger. Two important points of clarification, Baron. Are uh, they both fine? There is no video of Marcos. I was quite sure not to film him or his vehicle or his retinue. The video that's on the internet is all that exists. Second, I gave him every opportunity to leave and reach a diplomatic solution and he was quite intent 
on violence, and violence is what befell him. So, first of all, you're wrong. Every police cruiser in the city has dash cam. That's all gone now. Second, I don't doubt he provoked you. I don't doubt that he endangered civilians. But your response was disproportionate. I'm aware. And you have precipitated the conflict a little early. So, Eva. Yes? The fact that you're here tells me that you um, find these kindred to be... Good company. Yeah. Very pretty. That cuts ice with me. You and I, you know, business is business, but I know you're not stupid. I know you're a good judge of character. Vannevar has claimed the city center as his personal domain. Beverly Hills, Beverly Grove, Bel Air, Bel whatever. He's going to declare praxis very soon, maybe within a matter of nights. He'll choose a herald, a, a harpy, a, a mouthpiece. Mm. And that herald will be tasked with informing the barons that there's a prince. And that's the moment when we have to respond. I would like to speak with Vannevar. Would you? Surely. You let me know how that works out for you. <sighs> how do you propose we respond? Well, Victor is right about one thing. The barons do have to meet quickly. We have to have a plan. We have to be sure of each other. I'll set it up. You'll be invited. You're going to get what you wanted. Mm, I don't think this is what any of us wanted, but it's here. I don't think you're going to like it as much as you thought you would. <laughs> Baron, there's a concern that all of our colleagues may not be dealing honestly with us. How long you been a kindred anyway? <sighs> no, I expect everyone to be self-serving, greedy, and backstabbing, but just in the sense of self-interest, it doesn't behoove us to betray each other. And the truth is, these refugees were set upon very quickly by the Camarilla, and there was a very short list of people that knew they were even passing through. How do you know that? Because it's my job to know things. You keep going down this line of questioning, you're going to force me to ask exactly who the refugees are and where they are. So if you really want me to ask those questions, by all means, keep talking about it. What I don't know, I can't talk about. I would not want to create any more complications for you, sir. Here's a complication for you, Eva. Vannevar's got himself a Tremere. Who? He's been here before. Strauss. Still wearing the red suit, too. I don't think it looks good on him, but mm, whatever. You got a shaved head? Yeah, bald. Strauss. Ah, uh, it's not shaved, it's bald. Right. He was here a while ago. Made a lot of trouble for us. You know uh, X, the Malkavian that occasionally makes his way over here? Yeah, funny he guy. saw something like that, and he saw him holding a skull over the entire city. And a pomegranate. And pomegranate? A pomegranate. I, it's a Malkavian thing, but he saw that person significantly. 
Well, I'm no expert, but sounds bad. Hmm. Does that mean anything to you, a pomegranate from a Tremere? Uh, Eva, a... let's see. Let me <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> roll some occult knowledge for you. Can I also make an occult thing to see if I know anything about pomegranates? Mm. Intelligence <laughs> and occult. Okay. Pomegranates are symbols of life and fertility. Well, the last time I thought too hard about it, it went poorly, so I'm just going to <laughs> not <It's done. laughs> leave it to the experts. That would be five successes. Mm -hmm. So you can confirm what Annabelle has just said, that pomegranates um, are allusions in classical mythology to life mm -hmm. um, and fertility and growth, sometimes rebirth. Eva, however, has slightly deeper knowledge, and she knows that the pomegranate also features in several classical myths about the underworld. Persephone and Hades, mm. the six seeds. I'm a fan of the classics, but what does it have to do with Tremere in Los Angeles? Well, I mean, come on. I, I like X as much as the next person, but it's crazy. Who knows? Uh, he, he's seen things that proved to be accurate. Did he say it three times? He left soon after. Hmm. Mm. You think there's something to this? This skull and fruit? I mean... I don't think directly. I don't think the man will ever be standing on top of a building holding a skull and a pomegranate, yeah. but it might stand for something. I've seen you cast spells, and it didn't look quite so different from holding a skull and a pomegranate, so this one might actually be literal. I don't know. Either way, he's a problem. I trust X enough to know that. Put a pin in it. Hmm. Marcos, the sheriff, or maybe sheriff, or would-be sheriff, or whatever. What did he tell you? What did he talk about? I prefer to speak to you about that with the other barons. I prefer you tell me now. All right. Uh, he said you all have wasted California and you had a hundred years to make a difference and have done nothing with it. That's what he said. And that's why the Camarilla was back to actually make use of Los Angeles. Annabelle, what do you think about that? I think he's right. I thought I'm you might think that. But the power grabs, the backstabbing, the machinations... It leaves all of the Anarchs wide open for the Camarilla. And if the Succubus Club was any indication of what they do and what they can do and the disregard they have for life, I think that we're going to actually need to get our shit together and work together in order to drive them back. You're probably right about that. This is an old, old argument. A lot older than me. Older than any of the barons in this city. Maybe McNeil was there. Nobody's really sure. I mean, no one's seen him in a long time. It goes back to the 15th century, or so I hear. A place called Thorns. There was a meeting, uh, a conclave, a convention. Not like in Vegas. Kindred canites, vampires from all over Europe met in this little village in England. A place called Thorns. Still there. And they met because the Inquisition, the first Inquisition, and I mean the church, was scouring the continent wiping us out. Sure, they were looking for witches and devil worshippers and warlocks and who knows what else, but they also found us. So, the way I hear it anyway is that uh, at this convention the vampire attendees split. Some of them said, we got to go into hiding. There is no other way. We're going to get wiped out. 
we have to be absolutely secret, go underground, pretend to be human. And that was the masquerade. First tradition, some call it. And the faction that decided that that was the way to go became the Camarilla or the Camarilla. It's an Italian word, means small room, private meeting. And there was also a faction that said, no way. We're monsters and we should act like monsters. We should rule humanity. They should serve us. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We should unleash our monstrous and bestial nature. That was the Sabbat, and we don't talk about them a lot. Mm -mm. But the Anarchs were there too. In fact, the whole thing was precipitated by the first Anarch revolt, where we got fed up with our elders, got tired of being used as cannon fodder. The elders would create Trialder and kind of fling him at the enemy, let him burn while they escaped. Not exactly an ideal arrangement. At that time, however, the Anarchs, they just couldn't see eye to eye with the Sabbat, and they thought the masquerade was a pretty good idea. The rest of the rules, maybe not so much. So the Anarch movement and the Camarilla actually allied. They became one, one faction, one sect. I guess you could call us the loyal opposition. And it stayed that way for over 500 years until Prague. Now, this I do know about. Some of us are really ancient. I mean, ridiculously old. 500 years is nothing to them. And the Ventru had a guy that old. His name was Hardestat. Asshole. But powerful. And the Bruja at the Convention of Prague murdered him. Blew him away. So they say. So they say. And the murderer, kindred from your clan, a warrior, and a philosopher, the name of Bell, he led the Bruja out of the alliance and decided that the Anarchs were the only place for you. No more Bruja in the Camarilla. Camarilla, in response, dissolved the agreement. 500 years, poof, up in smoke. So, not a lot of love lost right now for your clan in the Camarilla. They blame you for this. Now, I personally think a lot of it is bullshit. Camarilla can't be trusted, and they lie. But most kindred do, from time to time at least. Kind of in our nature. So now, it's a war. Here in LA, when we had our little revolt, it was kind of in that same spirit. And now we have a war again. Does it have to be? <laughs> Depends on what you mean. What do you think, Jasper? You have an opinion. I think that they think we're weak and we have no ground to stand on. So to them, there's going to be 
a war because they're not going to lose anything. They're going to come in here and they're going to wipe us out and push us out of our territory. And they're going to get back what we have. I think they'll I think give us a choice first. Bend the knee. Mm, or probably. Fight. But, but that bending the knee, we don't just get to walk around after that. Nope. So is there a difference? Not to me. Me neither. Eva, I don't think you'd like to go back to the way things were. <laughs> Definitely not. So yeah, it has to be a war. But the times aren't so different. It was the first Inquisition that caused us all to find a way to coexist. The second Inquisition is upon us. I mean, shouldn't we at least try? Except they did it. Camarilla did it. They're the ones who caused it. This is what I heard. Camarilla took advantage of violent incidents to tip off government about the Sabbat. Said, hey, go get those guys. And when that inevitably went south, they needed somebody to blame. And so they looked around, and who do you think they blamed? All kindred. Well, specifically... Us, the Anarchs. The Anarchs. Specifically, young Anarchs with your face-to-book thing. They said, hey, it's your fault. You're on the, the media thing. You did this. You brought it down on us. And they kind of outlawed that kind of communication. Uh, it's not that you can't use the Internet. It's that you can't talk about our stuff on the Internet. I heard about this, but I didn't think it was true. Like, the, the Shreknet, the Nosferatu, like, is that true, too? That they were hacked? That they lost all of... I don't know, is it? Could be. I'm yeah, could be. No. I don't know. It's what I heard. I wouldn't put it past them. Technology's only been around for the exact same amount of time it's been around for the mortals. doesn't I, mean there couldn't be a human being who learns to hack better than us. So you're not wrong, Victor. We have very similar circumstances now. We have a second Inquisition when it's a lot better armed and informed. So even the appearance of the second Inquisition, even amongst all that, the Camarilla and the Anarchs find their existence is irreconcilable? I don't know if that's true. You got to remember a couple of things, Annabelle. One, we're immortal. We don't die. Irreconcilable differences tonight might be reconciled in a decade or two. When you live a while, Things seem different in perspective. And I know that's hard to understand. I know that you can't really conceive yet what it's like to see generations pass away before you. Comparatively, I'm not that old. But even now, my perspective is different. And what happens in a given night or even a given year, you know, I can afford to take the long view. So. So why can't there be a second convention of thorns? That's a good question. We all just want freedom. <laughs> Camarilla doesn't. We want know. survival. I can't think of a more common cause to rally around than survival. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, is a bunch of, of us don't believe this is happening. And a lot of us just want an excuse to kill each other. I have to try and talk to Vannevar. I have to. He may not listen. He may not want to. He may kill you. He may try. Mm. But I have to. He can't afford to talk to you. 
I mean, you can try, but it ain't gonna happen. He reached out once. He sent Chaz. Yeah. You remember Chaz? Oh, I know Mr. Price. I would sooner see a stained glass window shattered than see Vannevar destroyed. And if it has to be that way, so be it. But we don't have to start at violence. We can end at violence, but we don't have to start at violence. Should have thought of that a couple of nights ago. Look. I'm not saying you were wrong. I'm saying it's the excuse they needed. No, you're correct. It is. You should be wary if he has a Tremere with him. We'll be wary. We should be wary of a lot. But his, he can only have so many resources because he was driven out of San Francisco. If he had that much at his disposal, he would have held his city like he had for 90 years. I think the only reason you're all still here tonight is because that's true. And so we haven't got a lot of time. We'll call a meeting of the barons. Mm. We'll have a talk. We'll see how that goes. In the meantime... Reach out on your own to anybody you want to talk to. It's fine by me. It's going to take some, it's going to take a few nights to set this up. This ain't going to happen tomorrow. In the meantime, no more live feeds. No more Instabook. Not for a few nights anyway. I can give you a few nights. I understand that's gonna hurt your business. But you can, you can go a few nights laying low. A few nights for the good of the barons. So be it. See, you can't make a good decision when you try. So, Eva. Yes, Baron? When it comes down to it, can we count on your help? I'd rather die than go back to the Camarilla. Yes. Me too. Annabelle, I think what you're going to find, and I hate to say this, it isn't just about oppression. I mean, that's certainly part of it. It's a fundamental difference on how we get to be. I'm going to say good night now. I'll talk to you all a little later. Always a pleasure, Baron. And this is where we will end our story for tonight. But before we go, it's time to be reminded again that in the world of the vampires, secrets have a way of getting out. Please. Please, I can't do this anymore. They needed me and you made me abandon them. They're, they're my friends. I, I, should, I should have been there. I, I should have protected her, them. And now the Camarilla is gonna come for them. But they need me. I, I just don't wanna lie to them anymore. Please, Baron. Stop your sniveling and do your job. I pulled you out to protect you because I couldn't risk losing you in what's coming. But I, I would have been working for you. I, I would have been learning or earning more, more trust. Uh, you know I do whatever you ask me to do. I've been good. It just, it just hurts. I've never been a part of something like this. You are part of something. You answer to me. Did you forget our arrangement? Did you forget your loyalty? No, no, no. I know what I am, and I know who you are, and I know what you can do. I'll be good. Just, just forget I said anything. Very well. What do you have for me? 
Nelly uh, is still being haunted by the ghost. I, I think it's connected to Griffith Park in some way. Maybe the Felice curse or fleas or a flea-based perfume. Quiet. Or... I know all about that. What do you have that I can use? Jasper's going to teach me to moonwalk. I see. And uh, where does Victor stand on Fiona? Miranda? Abrams? Not good enough. Not good enough, my dear ex. You know, I could have sent someone smarter, someone more capable, but you were so eager to prove yourself. Have I made a mistake? No, no. I can do this. Please don't take them away from me. Set up a meeting. For you? With them? Like, in person? Set up a meeting. And then I'll figure out what to do with you. Hmm? Please don't hurt her. <laughs> 